Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 262 and today is our lesson number 177. Today's lesson is the continuation of what we did yesterday. Yesterday we solved, if you have watched yesterday's video and if you have not, you should, you should go and watch that video first because yesterday we solved the problem that you see there on page 262 problem number 14. Today is the continuation of it. Yesterday I gave a homework at the end, at the end, of, the, uh, at the end of, the, uh, of the lesson and the homework is this which is a very similar question to what you see on, on that page, page 262, number 14. Here's the question. The question simply is, what is the greatest possible straight line distance between any two points on a rectangular box 8 by 9 by 12? What is the greatest possible straight line distance between any two points on a rectangular box 8 by 9 by 12? And the answer choices that were given to us yesterday are 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. A, B, C, D, and E. And we're looking for the greatest possible distance. What we have to realize here is that there are three different scenarios we have to contemplate here. There are three different scenarios how this box may be sitting. We have to first contemplate scenario A where the floor where the floor may be floor of uh, 9 by 12. It doesn't really matter which one we contemplate first. I just want to make sure that I follow my notes here so that I don't go all over the place. That's one possibility. The floor might be 9 by 12. Another possibility is that it may be 8 by 9. Or third possibility is that it may be 8 by 12. Scenario B and scenario C. We're going to look at all of these scenarios one by one. Our job is not to find the greatest possible distance for a given scenario, but it simply says greatest possible distance for this box. We have to make sure that we find the biggest one, longest one, longest distance between any two points, as far apart as possible, going in a straight line on this box. Let's draw our box, shall we? I'm going to start out with the first scenario that I told you, which is a uh, I have here as a 9 by 12, the very first one here. I shouldn't have put the answer choices here. So here's your rectangular box. It should look something like this. That's our box. And the greatest possible distance that we're talking about is the same exact scenario as yesterday's, which are these two points. Let's call them P and Q. Let's join the P and Q. In order, for, in order for us to find the distance from P to Q, in order for us to find the distance from P to Q, just like yesterday in day number 176, we have to first find the distance of the diagonal, which is this part right here. Let's give these points names so that we don't keep uh, keep pointing to them. So that's this P, this is Q. I'm going to call this point R. So we have to first find the distance P to R, which is the floor diagonal. And the length of the floor diagonal will obviously depend on which floor we contemplate. We're looking at the floor of we're looking at the floor of nine by twelve. Nine by twelve, and the eight will go here. Let's take a look at it then. Scenario A, floor of 9 by 12, looks like this, 9 by 12, and this is the diagonal that we're talking about, and that diagonal that I just drew is the distance from P 
this diagonal that we just drew is a distance from P to R, not Q, P to R. P to R is a, is a, is a diagonal of the floor here. So that's pretty straightforward. So let's call this X. X squared, which is the hypotenuse square, would equal 9 squared plus 12 squared, and which is 81 plus 144. And if you add them all up, you'll find that it comes out to be 225. And therefore, X comes out to be square root of 225, which is 15. So that's our X, which is the floor diagonal. Now, before I go any, before I go any, any further, let me just ask you a quick question on a side note. Were you able to recognize right away, instead of doing all this work that we did here, instead of doing all this work that we did here, were you able to recognize that this here, this, this, this triangle, P, R, let's give this guy a name here. Where is this thing? P, R. How is he going to make our triangle that we're looking at? P to R is the diagonal that we just found. This is this is nine. So the so the triangle that we're looking at P R we have P Q R let's give, let's call it S. We're looking at this triangle on the floor. You have to imagine you have to, you have to think of on the floor. This is P R P. This is this point R, and this point right here is our S. Were you able to recognize that the triangle P R S is in fact is in fact a uh, 3, 4, 5 triangle. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. You see, this 9 here is a 3 times 3. This 12 here is 4 times 3. So we got a 3 here, we got a 4 here. Of course, this x is going to be 5 times 3. We didn't have to do all of this work if you were able to, if you were able to quickly recognize that it is a 9 and a 12. 9 is 3 times 3, 12 is 4 times 3, so we got 3, 4, and a 5 times 3. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And for those of you who still do not know what I'm talking about, uh, 3, 4, 5 triangle, uh, and, and, and for those of you who are, who are unable to recognize right away, that's the 3, 4, 5 triangle, I would like you to watch the 3, 4, 5 triangle. I would like you to watch geometry for GRE, day 7. Geometry for GRE, G7. Geometry for GRE, day 7. Watch that video and you will learn something out of it as to how to recognize a 3-4-5 triangle on the exam without having to waste your time doing all the calculation. Because sometimes the calculation could be quite nasty. But if you are able to recognize it right away, then that saves a lot of time. 3-4-5 triangle does not appear as a 3-4-5 triangle on the exam. 3-4-5 triangle on the exam always appears incognito, in disguise. So anyway, we are done with this thing. The floor is 15. So that's half the battle. Now, we look at the triangle. The floor is 15. Now we look at this triangle. This triangle here, P, Q, R. P, Q and R. As you can see here, this makes a 90 degree angle. This right here makes a 90 degree angle, which is what this is. And we just found that P to R, which is the floor diagonal, we just found was 15. Q to R, we know is 8, we just have to find this guy. Let's do it, shall we? Shall we? Let's call it Y. Because I used up the letter X to find the hypotenuse of the other triangle, let's call it Y. So here we have Y squared equals to 8 squared, 8 squared plus 15 squared, 8 squared is 64, 15 squared is 225, 225 and it's 64 will give us 289. Okay, keep listening. Now, the fact, listen very carefully, this is how you say a few seconds. The fact that uh, the fact that we are given answer choices here, five of them, and the fact that they are all integers, that tells us that this quantity, whatever the hell it is, is got to be a perfect square. We should be able to take a square root of it nicely. That's the first point. The second point is that the unit digit of this thing is 9, which means when we multiply any of these numbers by themselves, we have to end in a 9. 21 times 21 will have a unit digit of 1, 1 times 1. 20 times 20 will have a unit digit of 0. 19 times 19, what will be the unit digit of 19 squared? 9 nines are 81, it's going to end in a 1. 18 times 18 will end in a 4, 8 8 8s are 64. 
It must be this guy. Has to be. Has to be. Let's verify. 17 times 17. What can we do? Right, do it here. 17 times 17. 7, 7 is 49. Carry 4. 7 plus 4 is 11. And then 17. What do you know? 289. So the square root of 2, 289 is 17. So that's the answer we find so far. That's the answer we find so far. What do you suppose might happen if we if we had contemplated other scenario? Let's look at what happens if we have a if, it's, if we have a scenario two where we're dealing with a floor of eight by nine. Let's do eight by nine now. The floor of eight by nine. We're done with all of this thing. Obviously, I need the room, so I have to get rid of it. I'm going to give you the question also because you already have the question. So now we're looking at a floor of 8 by 9, 12 is going to end up here, and we're going to have 8 by 9. Let's first find the diagonal of this, this thing, again the same thing, in the triangle, in the triangle PRS. There's your floor. 8 by 9, 8 by 9, this is our P, this is our S, and this is our R. Let's find this floor, floor diagonal, x squared, will, this, so this is scenario B, x squared equals 8 squared plus 9 squared, which is 64 plus 81, looks like 144, x is square root of 144. Let's say we're done with that part. Now we can figure out P to Q. Let's do that. This is the right angle. This is square root of 145. We just found it. This is from P, P to R, and this is US. This is the right angle. It's right there. We have to find this thing. Let's call it Y, same as before. And our height now is 12. So now Y squared equals square of that quantity plus square of 12, which is which is just 145. Square of square root of 145 is just 145. Square of 12 is 144. 144 plus 145, we find that it's again 89. It's the same answer as before. Let's put another star next to it. Let's look at third scenario. A floor of 8 by 12. Floor of 8 by 12. Let's see what we get. The floor of 8 by 12, so 12 is going to go here, 9 is going to go there. And we end up with a floor of 8 by 12, there's our P, there's our R, and here's our S. It's called this X, which is again the floor diagonal. So the floor diagonal now is x squared, which is 8 squared plus 12 squared, which is 144 plus 64. We end up with 208, which means x equals the square root of 208. So we have our floor diagonal. Now we can figure out the distance from p to q, same as before. The height now is 9, let's call this y. Again, this is p, that's your q, and that's your r. It's the right angle. So y squared will equal square, square of that quantity plus 9 squared. 208 plus 81. What do you know? It is, in fact, 289. Same as before. Same as before. Why do you suppose that is? Why do you suppose that the longest distance possible, the greatest straight line distance possible in this box is always 17, no matter how the box is sitting? That's what it boils down to. Three scenarios that we contemplated of different floors is just how the box is sitting, which makes perfect sense because it doesn't matter how the box is sitting. 
the longest distance, think of this as the longest distance, think of this pencil as a, from this point to that point being 17 inches long. In this particular box with a dimension of 8 by 9 by 12, you can sit it on the, you can sit it like this, and it's 17 inches from one end from one end of the of the box to the other end going diagonally. That's the longest distance you're gonna have. So the pencil can sit like this, or it can sit like this, or it can sit like that. It doesn't matter how it sits, depending on how the box is sitting. The longest distance is going to be the pencil that you can fit in there is 17 inches. It does not going to change just because the box is sitting one way or the other. Do you understand? That's it. That was our, that's what a, that was our answer. 17 is the answer. I will see you tomorrow where we will start the data analysis question. Okay? Bye now.